Good evening everybody once again, it's uh, Ernie Hayes um, aka Blue Ernie It's 14th of June 2016 and I've got an update on all their movies As I know all my friends and that like me to comment on what I've seen and what I've bought and what I'm going to get in the future And if they're any good or if they're worth renting, watching, downloading or anything like that So these are all, there's a couple of newish ones, well about three new ones uh, but mainly they're all of older ones because nothing against new films at all it's just that once I've seen them at the cinema I'm not just going to go out and pay 15 to 20 pound per film when they first come out on blu-ray I'm going to wait bide my time a few months wait till they come down in sale till other new ones come along so like for instance I want Deadpool I've seen it at the cinema I've seen it on a streamer and it's just come out on blu-ray but you're looking at between 15 and 18 quid and i've already seen it twice so i'm in no rush to run out and get it give it a few months august september i'll probably pick it up for about eight pound something like that maybe a bit less so at the moment these have these have been new obviously and now they're not we're going to start off i picked this up um in a cex for a pound it's an M. M. Night Shyamalan film, He Who Did Signs, The Sixth Sense and all them films. Now, I've heard it's bad as in pretty bad, but it only cost me a pound. It's called The Last Airbender. It's based on a Nickelodeon TV show, a bit like a manga cartoon stroke, Pokemon thing, but it's live. That's the cover, that's the back art. Now, I've not watched it, but I've read reviews on YouTube and all the other movie sites I go on and people saying it is it's so bad it's good so but for a pound if it's no good I think it was a pound was it? yeah it was a pound so if it's no good I'll take it back to CEX and just part exit simple as that so that's M. Night Shyamalan's The Last Airbender so give it a go next up this was made in 1996 so it's just celebrated its 20th anniversary it's it was like i wouldn't call them a double bill but they would be good as a double bill if you're into them uh, it's robert de niro joe pesci james woods and shannon stone we're talking martin scorsese's classic casino all about las vegas casino in 90 early 1970s uh i've seen this i've been to the cinema years ago see it. i've seen it on dvd and it cost me £3.50 again in CEX second hand it's a really really good film it's very violent it's got a lot of drug use and it's basically Martin Scorsese's version of Las Vegas in the early days before it got cleaned up and everything it's violent a lot of bad language Joe Pesci more or less he's, this, he's not the same character by name but he's playing the same character as he did in Goodfellas which I've got on Blu-ray and uh, Robert De Niro plays the casino boss who's married to Sharon Stone and it's really good it's about three hours long it's a classic it's pure Scorsese the soundtrack's amazing the DTS Master Audio is brilliant and Las Vegas looks amazing in HD so for £3.50, that's a keeper. 10 out of 10, Casino. Next up, this film is also 20 years old this year. And the new, they've made a sequel. Um, this one doesn't star Will Smith, but it does star Jeff Goldblum. We are, of course, talking about Independence Day. Now, I ordered this a month ago. I already had it on Blu-ray. Because the new one, Independence Day Resurgence, comes out at the end of June. It's going to be a massive blockbuster. Virtually the same as this. Blows shit up and loads of action. The reason I bought this is it's got the extended director's cut by about six minutes. And it's got the theatrical cut. And the big reason I bought it is because it said it had a DTS Master Audio 7.1 surround soundtrack. And it states it on the box and all the features but when you plug it in into the player you put it set the options to what sound you want to watch it's only got a 5.1 master audio mix which is the same as the one i already had 
So I feel like 20th Century Fox have cheated me because they're advertising one thing and then giving you another, which false advertising for a start. The film's great. It's a great popcorn movie. It's basically what I would call a big screen version of the sci-fi series from the 80s, V. Basically, that's what it is. Great film. It's good on Blu-ray. I've watched it. The sound's really, really good. But if it says 7.1, because I have a 7.1, well, 7.2 surround sound. I have two subwoofers, active and seven speakers. I can have nine if I want, but I don't need that many. And this is a great film, but Fox Video DVD have ripped me off by not giving me the 7.1 they said they had. Other than that, the film's a 10 out of 10, great fun. And it's brilliant on Blu-ray, the picture quality is amazing. There we go. Up next, this is the first one. The sequel came out last year. It's basically, I love it, it's, think like East is East and West is West and all that. It's basically about a group of pensioners who all retire and want to go and live because it's cheaper in India. And there's this hotel called the Best Marigold Hotel in the World, which is that film. And you've got Judy Dench, Bill Nighy, Tom Wilkinson, Maggie Smith, Penelope Wilton, Ronald Pickup, Celia Imre and Dev Patel from Slumdog Millionaire. And it's a feel-good really good fun film it's funny it's heart-wrenching it's sad and it's all about old age how when people retire do they stay and want, want to stay in britain do they want to live here if it's cheaper to go and live in a hotel and have your own apartment in this hotel and your retirement is great and you've got sunshine why not it's a really good old really really good film i give it a good eight out of ten the sequel the second best marigold hotel is also very good when I get that, I'll do a little mini review like this one. So if you want to see fun, enjoy a big smile, a warm heart, I recommend the best exotic Marigold Hotel. Good fun. Up next, before he went doolally and into himself, um, Shia LaBeouf, after he did the Transformers, decided to make a modern twist on... The Will Smith film, Enemy of the State. We're talking Eagle Eye. He's basically a lonely little worker who suddenly finds that everywhere he's going, Big Brother's watching CCTV. And something happens and he has to go on the run with this girl. This was only a pound in Poundland, which I'm very surprised, but I thought, well, I ain't giving it up. It's good. The soundtrack is also, this is a um, 5.1 Dolby True HD. The film itself for a quid, it's not a bad little film, it's not great, it's alright, it's a 7 out of 10, it's a no-brainer. Put it on, enjoy yourself, that's the back as well. And that's, as I said, that's Shia LaBeouf, and believe me, nowadays, you look at him now, go on the internet, type in his name in YouTube, the man is, I think he's 20 pence short of 20 pence, or a dollar short of a dollar. There you go, but eagle eye for a pound, I'm not giving up. Next up, Jason Statham. Little did know, a lot of people don't know this, but he was actually on the British Olympic diving team in the old days. Then Hollywood called and his mates with Tom Cruise and Beckham and everyone and Guy Ritchie. And since Lockstock, he's made loads and loads of action B-movies. This one, again, is another B-movie. We're talking Safe, which is... Basically a remake of Bruce Willis's early 90s film Mercury Rising about a boy with autism who can crack codes and see things that people can't see in these letters. And then after him, this in its sense takes a little Chinese girl who's 10 years old and she's got a code in her head memorised that sort of mafias all want and everything. And Jason Statham is basically on the good side and he needs to protect her and it's basically it does what it says on the tin blows shit up kills people fights action loads of it don't need a brain to watch it again six out of ten but for a couple of quid it's a no-brainer and the sound master audio is 5.1 dts hd because i love dts master audio i think it's fantastic when you get a good sound of a good film it adds to the whole lot next up is my old mate Denzel Washington. Like I said, if Denzel took a shit, 
sat on the toilet, I'd watch it because he's a great actor. I just love the guy. I think he can act anything. He equalised a lot. This was about three or four years ago, this film came out. Not that long ago, based on a true story. Uh, I picked this up for 61 pence on Amazon. Didn't realise it was coming from the States, so I had to pay a couple of quid postage. But we're talking about Robert Zemeckis' masterpiece, Flight. That's the cover. It's a double disc, which is really good. Now, Flight is about... Denzel Austin plays an airline pilot who has to basically avert a massive catastrophe, a crash landing of a full jet with over 300 people on it. And you see it all in the trailer. There's nothing, it's a true story. You're not going to miss anything. The base, I want to give you the main plot, plot twister because if you don't, if you've not seen it, it's worth watching. He basically plays a pilot who has to avert this crash. Some people do die, some people don't. But he's hailed a hero. But then the investigation starts into his personal life and his past. And it gets really good. And it's a cracking film. It's Denzel Washington, Robert Zemeckis' Flight. That's a 9, possibly 10 out of 10. Really good. There we go. Next up, another one from Poundland for a pound. I've got all three, but... I've only ever seen half of the first one. I'm going to actually watch it because I like DreamWorks. I like DreamWorks' animation. They do some good stuff. I love the Shrek films. They're great fun. I'm talking about this one. is Jack Black as Kung Fu Panda. There we go. And that's also got a 5.1 True HD soundtrack. It's basically a massive cast. Angelina Jolie's in it. Jack Black's in it. Dustin Hoffman's voice. Loads of people have got voiceovers in it. He plays... A chubby panda who basically has to find his inner self and he's got to help save his village and he has to learn Kung Fu. But he's not the most agile Kung Fu panda about. So it's quite fun. It's Jack Black. It's DreamWorks. The animation's amazing. The quality, the picture quality is stunning. And for a pound, no brainer. You kick it up, you buy it. Right, next up... A classic from the 80s. Now, I, I love horror films. I really do. I like mainly the older horror films up to the 90s. Then it started going too many CGI, too much rubbish. Now, I also, I've never seen, and I don't think I will want to watch, a Twilight film. Because for the simple reason is, the crap. What I've seen in the trailers of, it's just teenagers, heartthrobs, boy band lookalikes playing vampires and werewolves and romance falling in love and same with true blood not interested walking dead amazing that's good true blood no this is this one i'm going to show you now is what well, probably the best vampire film since 1985's fright night and fright night is amazing 10 out of 10 more on fright night a bit later we are of course talking about joel schumacher's the Lost Boys on Blu-ray, which has got a true HD soundtrack as well. Kiefer Sutherland, Jason Patrick, um, Alex, I can't remember his second name, but he's in the the Bill and Ted films. And it's also got Corey Haim and Corey Helm, as in the Frog Brothers. And it's basically set in San Dimas, um, not San Dimas, San wherever in America. And it's a seaside town and there's a biker gang and it's great. The soundtrack's amazing. The dialogue's great. The action's fantastic. It's funny. And if you like 80s movies and if you love vampire films, this is probably a true vampire film. The Lost Boys, miles better than your Twilight crap. Excellent. And I only paid £3.50, I think, for this. You have a look. Yeah, £3.50. So, happy days for that one. Great film. Right, up next, a double bill. I bought this for five quid from Amazon, and again, it came from America. My all-time movie hero is Clint Eastwood. The guy is a living legend. 86 years old, and he's still going strong. The guy can't do wrong in my book. He can make toilet paper adverts, and I think it's an Oscar-winning film. <laughs> he's that good. Now, these came out in the late 70s, early 80s. It was two films he made. 
and people said it was going to flop and everything animal rights people were up in arms because of the animal he was using with it and it was it's basically fun we are talking of course the classics every which way but loose and any which way you can clint eastwood and clyde the orangutan there's the back of it all absolute bona fide classics there's a line in it where he goes right turn clyde every time he does it clyde puts his hand out of his car window and always punches someone it's fun clyde takes a dump or a turd in a cop car without the cops knowing it and when they have to run to do an incident they jump and sit in a load of dung and it's fun it's just great fun it's basically plays he's set in in the country western section of california clint eastwood is a trucker and he basically is also a street fighter, a barroom brawler who does illegal fighting. And he's always has fights and he brings Clyde along and his brother Orville. And it's basically Clint falls in love with his singer and has to follow her all over the place. It's funny, it's crude in parts, but it's not too bad. It's great fun. And they made a mint at the box office and it proved it. If you want a good laugh, these are great films. Every which way but loose and any which way you can. 10 out of 10. Right, up next is me, four newish ones, and then I'm done. Talk about Fright Night before, I said the 1985 film is a classic. It is. They remade it in 2012. I wasn't looking forward to it because I, it's such a good film, the original. It didn't need to be made, but they did. And I did watch it. And I thought, yeah, it was all right. Colin Farrell stars in the remake and Anton Yelkin. And that's Fright Night. I've got the 3D one for a fiver, double disc. Set in Vegas. And the Peter Vincent character, who's the vampire hunter, is played by David Tennant, a.k.a. Doctor Who. He plays a Vegas magician. And he's got issues. And he meets Charlie Brewster, and they are, who thinks that Colin Farrell's character, Jerry Dandridge, is a vampire living next door. And it sticks to the story of the original. And it's good. It's a good, fun film. It's all right. It's a proper vampire film. It's none of this Twilight shite, as I said. But it's good. But it's not Fright Night 1985, which is fantastic. I'll give this 7, possibly slash 8 out of 10. If you want a good old fun. Now, I'm going to watch it in 3D because I've not seen the 3D one. And I've got a 3D telly, so 55 inch, that'll be good fun. So there we go, Fright Night, the remake. Not bad. Right, up next is, going in order this, another film come out a couple of years ago. Quentin Tarantino, before he made The Hateful Eight, went back and did his version of a spaghetti western. And um, we are talking about Jamie Foxx, Leonardo DiCaprio, Christopher Schultz, Waltz, sorry, and Samuel Jackson. Django Unchained, fantastic film, 10 out of 10. Tarantino, again, like Denzel, can make great films. The Hateful Eight, if you've never seen it, is brilliant. It's just an amazing film. The cinematography is fantastic. This is a similar. This is more like Roots Slavery, as in pretty, it's pretty, gro it's pretty gory as well, and it's shocking in parts because it's about slave trade, about owners and everything, and how Jamie Foxx plays Django, a guy who is basically a free man. He's been given a free pass and he can do what he wants. But a lot of the landowners don't believe in what that is. And all he wants to do is go and find his original wife who's been put into slavery and rescue her. And Christopher Waltz decides to help him. And I'm not going to say more, but go along with it. It's cracking. And that's got a DTS Master Audio. And I'm really looking forward to that again. That's Django Unchained. Right, what two more. These came out last year. Now, this is the fifth one in a series. Tom Cruise reinvented Mission Impossible. I've got them all. I've just picked this up for £6. This is Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, the latest one that came out uh, September last year. I went to the cinema to see this. It's a great mm -hmm. film. It's really good fun. And Jeremy Renner's in it, as is Simon Pegg, and it's basically Mission Impossible. It's worth watching. If you get the whole set, they're worth doing them all in a week, having a great old good night, good old fun, good popcorn fun, good 8 or 9 out of 10 for this. 
The surround sound is Master Audio 7.1 DTS and Dolby Atmos. If you don't have a Dolby Atmos amp and you plug it in, it will revert back to the original 7.1 audio mix of all Atmos tracks. I don't have an Atmos amp because I can't, the speakers are expensive on top of it and I'm not going to keep dipping into new technology yet till I'm, I'm happy with what I've got. So I'm going to watch that as well. That's a great film, Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation. There's the reverse cover. Right, lastly but not leastly, my old Bay Richard doesn't like these films. He didn't like the originals. I love the original films. When this came out last year, it was 30 years since they made one and everyone wanted it. We're talking about Tom Hardy, Charlie Theron, Mad Max, Fury Road. Again, a Dolby Atmos track, which goes into 7.1 Master Audio. This is 2 hours 10 minutes of non-stop action. It was even nominated, which is a rarity. This is number 4 in a set. It was nominated for the Best Picture at the Oscars this year. Well, last year for this year. And you can see why. The colours. 85% of the movie is proper stunts, proper cars and everything. All of it. There's hardly any CGI. The only CGI you'll see is when it's really dangerous. But you can't tell. But all of it is like the old days of filmmaking. It's proper stunts, proper drivers. And George Miller is the only one who can make Mad Max. You know, it, it, this is a absolute 10 out of 10. adrenaline fueled fast ride. If you thought Fast and Furious were good with car chases and action, this, this will make that look like a go-kart track. This is bizarre. There's a guy 25 feet above this big truck on a string playing an air guitar with speakers booming out across this desert while they're chasing this big truck. And there's flames coming out of it and it's just like, it's just a visceral effect. It's like, wow. And if you want it, it's a bit of humour, but it's violent, but it's Mad Max. All right, Mel Gibson's not Mad Max here because he's too old. Tom Hardy does a really good job. But Charlie Theron... Furiosa, whoa, what can you say? She was amazing. And I hope they make another one. My OB doesn't like Mad Max. He says, a waste of time, boring crap. I love Mad Max. I think it's fantastic. So there you go. That's my pickups. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 Blu-rays I've picked up in the past month since my last video. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed my little video. Take care, whatever you're doing. Have a fantastic summer. I'll do another video in a few weeks. Um, I'll post it when I get some new stuff or what I've seen. And everyone, have a good day. See you all soon. Take care. Bye.